I start to see how this, uh, all of this theory about reasoning can, can apply to our description logic. Mm -hmm. um, okay, uh, well, let's see this one. It's, uh, it's about the syntax that we use uh, in description logic. Um, I, I, I want to skip the mathematical part, uh, um, except for saying that the, the semantics uh, or description logic uh, is, is abstract, of course, uh, and it relies on uh, some sort of uh, interpretation space uh, of the different constructs. Mm -hmm. So when, when first I say that C and D or the concept in, in description logic are classes or sets, uh, is actually not correct. No? They are terms, general terms, uh, that are mapped uh, through an arbitrary interpretation function, which is arbitrary but should have some properties, into the space of sets. Mm -hmm. So we cannot talk directly of sets, uh, but uh, C and D are not set, but the conjunction of C and D is such that the interpretation of this conjunction leads to an intersection of the abstract sets uh, that are the interpretations of C and D. This concept of interpretation of a formula is something which is very common in mean, theoretical uh, computer science. Uh, when you define uh, uh, new formal systems based on the properties of known formal systems, such as uh, set theory here on the right. Mm -hmm. And how you link the two are through some, they call it interpretation function, which usually is abstract, you never compute it. No? You just have uh, proof some properties to that. So there's some sort of a parallel between set theory on the right and uh, description logic on the left. Set theory on the right and uh, description logic on the, on the left of uh, uh, quantification and uh, um, absolute and existential quantification. Okay. Uh, this is more or less the, the picture that we already saw. So with this formal model, what can we do? Oh, we can uh, reason about the structure of the ontology, the hierarchy of classes, reason about the relationships, the properties, and reason about the instances. In theory, what, what we are saying now is about what can we be done in general with the system doesn't mean that the reason that we find uh, are able to do all of this. Okay? Theoretically, they could, uh, but the, the implementation is not always full. So, what kind of questions can we ask a query? The basic question is uh, about the concepts. Um, the simplest question that we ask is, is uh, a given concept uh, in uh, OWL, we call it class, equivalent, same as, or different from the bottom class? This symbol is nothing. OWL is nothing. So the class is a, 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 you remember that there's over a thing and over nothing at the bottom. So we are, <coughs> one question is, is a class empty by definition? Empty by definition. Doesn't mean that we are asking whether the class has some individual. We are asking whether the class could have individuals or not. If a class is empty, is equivalent to bottom, to no, to nothing, it means that the definition of the class is inconsistent, contradictory. I'm asking for a class to have a property, and another property, and another property, whose combination whose intersection is empty. So that class would never be able to have any instance. If I try to add an instance to a class in this way, then the reason will tell me, like that, when you talk about instances, that the whole system is not consistent. There are violations. But we can, even before, huh, even before adding individuals, we could understand that the definition of a class is uh, useless doesn't allow the creation of any, uh, of any uh, calls. 
for example, in our ontology, we defined, if I'm not wrong, a teacher. Mm, let's see, that's about it. With a maximum limit of 10 courses. Okay? So if I were now to define a, a powerful teacher, a teacher that has more than 15 courses, that could be a subclass of teacher when I define more than 15 courses, or even a subclass of person. Hmm? But then that could have uh, the same properties of teacher. So I don't need to be a subclass of teacher to be a teacher. Uh, being a teacher means uh, satisfying all the properties that make a person a teacher. So the fact that uh, um, a person has a faculty, a given person can also have a faculty. It's not forbidden to add a, a new uh, property to a subclass. So, of course, if I'm making a subclass of teacher here, saying a powerful teacher is a teacher that teaches more, at least a minimum 15 courses, it's that I will see them in the same line in the subclass and this subclass will be empty by definition because there will be no instance possible of a teacher that has more than 15 courses and at the same time less than 10 courses no, this of course is trivial it's something if you if you create a subclass here it will be <laughs> you we will read that in the same page but also if you are creating a class uh, by suppressing person or with other combinations in other ways, uh, the result will be the same. That class will never be able to have an instance because that instance would either violate this restriction or violate the other restriction. So it will not be possible to have one element. So uh, it's always important to check that there are no empty classes in our control because otherwise we, are, we think we are describing something but actually we are describing the empty set because of some complaint that we put before. So this is a basic check. It's just on the terminology level. It doesn't depend on the interests. We could also use this in the other way around uh, by asking uh, to our ontology, is it possible that kind of question? Okay, is it possible that, uh, I don't know, a uh, university may have uh, two or three degrees? Different degrees? How can we ask this question? We try to build a subclass with these properties. And then ask the reasoner, is this sub subclass empty? Is this concept satisfiable? It doesn't depend on the instance, it depends only on the rules that we have set, on the other restrictions. So, a way of asking ourselves uh, whether a given situation, a given class, uh, is compatible with all the restrictions that we have declared on all the other classes. It's a weak way of reasoning because we, it doesn't take into account all of the instances, all the concepts, all the logical constraints. Mm -hmm. Another way of another question is uh, is C1 a subclass of C2? Of course. If it's a direct class, obviously it's true. But they may be unrelated classes that just happen to be a subclass of each other from the logical point of view again, not, not looking at the instances. It means that every instance that satisfies all the constraints to be part of C1 would also logically imply that that specific instance would also satisfy all the conditions, all the restrictions for being part of C2. So if, from the logical point of view, every pot possible potential instance of C1 would satisfy all the conditions for being an instance of C2, then C1 is a subject of C2, even if we don't, we, there are maybe in different parts of the, of the ontology. Um, And again, we, how, how can we use this? We can construct a class by describing some properties 
and checking whether that class exists, it is a legal subset of another class. You know, all the class of the workers, whether they are a subclass of the people with the contract, for example, or it would be possible to be a worker without a contract. If it is not a, if the worker is not a subclass of having a contract, means that there are some rules that allow working without a contract, and this may be something to be fixed. So the reasoner can give us only very simple answers to simple questions. Is this class empty? Is this class a, sub a subclass? We should be clever in asking the question. We should create a, a hypothetical class that describes mm, something we, we need to understand. So this class will not be part of the ontology, not be part of the domain model. It's a class that we add to check the domain model. Okay, I have, if I have to add this class, well, does this class will fall in the, in the hierarchy? Will it fall to nothing? Will it fall inside, um, inside another class and so on? And so I can understand this hypothetical class or this, uh, this question. So uh, it's more of an art of asking questions to an algorithm which, by the way, is quite stupid. Hmm? Then, so this was about concepts. Uh, Terminological reasoning, uh, the difference between this and that, say that this class is not empty, this class uh, is included in the table one. Formally, what, what is different here is this sigma in front of the truth symbol. And uh, um, this sigma contains all the known facts Okay, so in the first case was, is this class impossible? In this case, the question is, is this class impossible given all the facts that are already in the ontology? Also facts that are not class definitions, but the instances, by, but properties and so on. So we also take into account property restrictions. Yeah. It's not very different, probably, uh, we, what we want more is this kind of reasoning rather than the, uh, the one before that doesn't take into account, uh, only takes into account the um, class definitions and not property restrictions. So, but they are very similar to us. Hmm? Mm -hmm. In any case, we are checking is this class empty or not. The next step would be also to throw in the instances, the individuals. So if I have some set of individuals, so the knowledge base consists of term, uh, terminology and actions hmm? and facts. Um, we may have uh, additional types uh, of reasons. The first one, the most important, is consistency. Without the instances, nothing can be inconsistent. The class uh, of power competition it's not forbidden, it's not inconsistent, it's just empty. I, there are millions of ways of describing the empty set. Okay? We, we put a set of logical constraints that are incompatible, and we are describing the empty set. Is the empty set legal? Yes. Is it inconsistent? No. It's just another name for the empty set. It's stupid, yes. It's wrong, yes. But mathematical it stands. When we add some instances to a class, and so we are saying that this individual is a type of that class, then at that point we are, we are an, an action. Okay? Until then, we are just adding declarations of logical constraints on top of nothing. No? We are, the only actions at the beginning are uh, um, think is a class. Like that, very generalized. But when we have our own individuals, we are adding actions to the formal set. And so it may happen that actions could be inconsistent with each other or could be inconsistent with the, with the logical constraints. 
So by saying, by adding individual, means saying that specific individual belongs to that class, implies that all the logical properties that we define for the class should apply to the individual. Um, and if the class is an empty class, so it's uh, it's uh, it's empty, you know, it cannot it not, cannot be satisfied, uns unsatisfiable, then the whole model becomes inconsistent because from the logical point of view, we can infer that that class is nothing, empty set. From the axioms, we know that that class at least one has one element. So, how can the, the two facts uh, be together in the same model case? They can't because they are contradictions. Okay? We cannot say which is right and which is wrong. We just say that from two different lines of reason, one from the conceptual reason. We have a conclusion. This class doesn't have any individual. And the other from the axiomatic reason. We see that there is an individual. Yeah. These two statements cannot be true at the same time. So the whole ontology is inconsistent. The reasoner will not tell you that individual is wrong or that logical consequence is wrong. The reasoner can only say if you are if you are assuming both of them, then the consequence will be a contradiction. So you cannot assume both of them, modify something. The whole model is not consistent. I cannot do any kind of reasoning, any kind of query. Because depending on the starting point, I will get different results. Okay, so when we are adding some uh, individuals, there is also the, the, also the risk of making the ontology inconsistent. Consistency means that all the individuals are compatible with the logical constraints uh, coming from the structure of the ontology and from the um, uh, property, property constraints uh, uh, that we have imposed on, on the classes. So at this point, if uh, an ontology is not inconsistent, we may have, we may have uh, two other queries that can be done on the ontology. So we have ontology, classes, properties, restrictions, plus individuals. These individuals have been just declared. We have, uh, in some cases, we usually have a type for these individuals. It will belong to a class, but it's not. We are not forced to use our time on the case of individual. We, have, we may have relationships between the individuals. So at that point, we can ask, given this individual, what are its classes? Plural. Because an individual may have more than one class. An individual belongs to every class for which that individual satisfies all the logical of course, if I insert an individual into a class, it will belong to all the several classes that are created. But maybe we, we discover that the logical constraints say that that individual will also belong to another class. So in this case, we are uh, asking which, are, which is the class to which a, a given individual belong, belongs, class or classes. The other question is, uh, given a class, uh, list the individuals belonging to that. So I define a class, maybe one class that we have as a query because they, they want to understand uh, something, the, the work with that will have a construct or something like that. And I ask the reader, Give me the list of all the currently defined individuals that could belong to this class. That logically belong to this class. So there will not be individuals asserted into that class. No? Okay, some of them will be axiomatically linked to the class, so we declare that. Okay. 
we are not so many interested in that. But are there any other existing individuals that may belong to this class? Okay, always make the difference between potential individuals, and we are working at the class level. Is it possible that, in theory, a new individual could be in this class? And here, we are doing a more specific question. Among the individuals that they are already defined, any of these, does any of these belong? So these are all the kinds, basically, four kinds of reasoning tasks that are supported from the logical point of view. Satisfiability of a concept, subset, subsumption of a concept, so subclass, implies some class, consistency, and uh, is a statement, so belonging to a class. So depending on whether we are, we start from the individual and find a class, or start from the class and find the individual, it's the same reason in task. Mm -hmm. These are the four main possibilities. Mm -hmm. More of this description logic doesn't support. So it's always, usually, no, uh, the task is uh, creating the right class definition and then running the reason. Because if we only work with the standard classes, um, it's uh, quite uh, with the normal class is part of the domain description the kind of uh, the, the information that the reasoner will give is quite limited by the way this is uh, the mathematics from the technical point of view uh, the definition of a reasoner is also quite limited that says that uh, a consistency checker now, if we, we see the document from the working group of the OWS semantics, says, okay, we need a tool that takes a document as input and returns one word, consistent, inconsistent, or unknown. This would be the minimum capabilities of a tool that we can use as a semantic reasoner, which is not, not very useful at the moment. It seems very, very, very poor, no? but this is the, 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 the minimum level that we can do. Um, okay, I think that okay, so how how would how does it work in uh, in, uh, in Protege for example? Okay. You already saw uh, with the, in the Ontology 101 class, uh, uh, the reasoner at work, okay? So now, now maybe we can understand a little bit more or what happens behind the scenes, okay? So, for example, we use the fact reasoner, but all the other one will give uh, you very similar results. And uh, you see that uh, in the preferences, we could, check what kind no, of reasoning types, what kind of inferences we want the reasoner to compute. So right now, probably we are able to understand most of these definitions. Uh, satisfiability. So it will check whether classes, all defined classes are satisfiable. So there are no logical um, incompatible definitions. Equivalent classes and super classes are um, are similar because first you compute superclasses and then if you find that A and B are superclass of each other in both ways then it means that they are equivalent. So it will find the new superclass or subclass relationships and of course also equivalent classes. Consistency means uh, uh, discovering this, that something is a class. This for class, then for classes in general. So for the hierarchy. Then we have the object properties. Satisfiability of an object property means that the property can be assigned. So there exists at least one couple of individuals for which the property can be assigned. So maybe the class is satisfiable and that the other class is satisfiable. We have a relationship between the two classes, but the constraints make it impossible to, to instantiate a relationship at the instance level. Mm -hmm. um, inferring domains and ranges so we have we may have some declared domains or declared ranges over an object property 
but some new ones can be discovered. Maybe because the property is uh, uh, transitive, or maybe it's uh, reflexive, and so on. We know the inverse. We know the subclass of the domain, and so we can discover uh, new information about the domain's ranges of a property, whether some properties are equivalent. And equivalent means that every couple of instances that can be linked by one of these, one of the two properties, will also logically uh, be linked by the other ones. And the super properties, the same as subclasses. And inverse property, you can discover in some cases inverse properties if uh, they are not already declared. Now, discovering inverse properties is quite uh, uncommon because you need to have uh, all the logical uh, condition that if A belongs to B, then B belongs to A, and so on. Uh, it doesn't, it's not sufficient to have domains and ranges reaching because reaching domains and ranges may link different. Uh, individuals data properties okay we, we use uh, very little data properties and then individual inferences types type means inferring which is the class to which a given instance belongs object property assertion uh, so checking uh, that an individual satisfies all the assertions coming from the properties that the individual is belonging to and so in that in that process you will discover new object properties so the, uh, the, the individual will be linked to those and discovering that different individuals are actually the same we know that in, all, in RDF uh, two different names may refer to the same resource okay and uh, lo you may infer them from the uh, from the logical point of view so these are the kind uh, of reasoning tasks that we can that we may ask of course we we have always zero 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 because we didn't run the original yet so this is the same ontology that you work with the uh, with Luigi let's start to start the reasoner and uh, the reasoning is running and uh, we say that uh, uh, we see that he already did something or already spending some milliseconds because which is very, very small ontology. And to see the results of the, of the reasoning, of course, we go to the inferred tab, where all the inferred information is uh, uh, highlighted in, uh, in yellow, in this case. So what we see here, just by browsing the class hierarchy, is that uh, from the terminology point of view, so from the classic point of view, there was nothing new. So all the, there, there are not any additional properties or subclasses that have been discovered by the reasoner. If we go to the individuals, we find some uh, object properties in this case that were discovered. So the, the reasoner discovered that semantic web toe is in this degree, is followed by this and is taught by this person. These two were obtained by um, the inverse properties, because we had the, the teacher's relationship and the student of relationship, and uh, okay, other in other cases, another inverse relationship. Okay, there's nothing more here. Okay, with the, with the, with the information that we have here was not enough. No, to, to discover any, any additional classes and so on. Hmm. So in this case, if we want to do some additional reasoning task, hmm, we could, for example, add one class and see whether it's consistent, add one instance and see whether it's consistent and so on. For example, is it possible for a course to be offered by two different universities? the same course being part uh, of uh, two different degrees. For example, we have uh, this is uh, MS in computer engineering, which is of type a master degree, offered by Politecnico di Torino. What happens if, the, if I try to offer this uh, degree also in Politecnico di Milano? 
will be a problem or not. So we see that Polytechnic in Torino offers a degree MS Computer Engineering in Torino. Polytechnic in Milano doesn't offer anything, so let's try to offer also offers degree. Sorry? It shouldn't be a problem, huh? Depends. Depends on what we model in, in the ontology, whether we put a constraint or not. Uh -huh. huh? uh, MS in computer engineering in Torino. So now, now we are stating that MS computer engineering in Torino is offered here, of course, but also in Polytechnic in Milan. Let's see if the reasoner is fine with that, so we just uh, synchronize the reasoner. We are adding some facts, so we are pushing the new fact to the reasoner. And as you mentioned, the reasoner is fine with that. Because we don't have any constraint on the fact that a course can only be offered by one university. One, sorry, a degree can only be offered by one university. So we have this degree program, which is a master in computer engineering. We could add one constraint that say, okay, but now I forget, now I understand that there's some information missing. No? I, I was playing with the ontology. I model something that for me is wrong, but the ontology doesn't detect it. It means that, it, that the ontology doesn't understand yet some of the constraints of the real world. So in this case, I need to, for example, let's hope it works, let's say that uh, a degree... On the instance or on the class? The constraints are always defined in the class and will always be checked on the instances. Ah. Okay, so I cannot create any, a constraint on the instance. The instance is there or not, belongs or not. The class has a, log a set of logical properties that will apply to all of the instances and properties belonging to that. Okay, so if I want to say, I will say that any instance of degree program should have maximum one relationship of type uh, offered by with an instance of type university. So we define the relationship at the class level and that will speak for the instances. So at the degree program, we say that, okay, I need to make an object restriction and uh, it's offered by, right, that's a bit, uh, offers course, university offers degree, and what is the offered by, okay because all these names are similar so offers by offered by as a domain degree program and range university you see that this domain this range were inferred are yellow because the reason of the we, we didn't state them explicitly but from the classes in which they appear as restrictions you understood that this should be part so offered by is the property that we want to restrict on so offered by should be offered by a university so the subject is degree program restricting the property offered by on the university maximum one so and we have here uh, offered by maximum one university. This master course, sorry, what are the instances? Master uh, Computer Engineering in Torino. We see that the reasoner uh, had these two offered by and didn't complain. Now, we, if we try to synchronize the reasoner again to push the new information, we have a warning. Okay, say so, okay, your ontology is inconsistent, is consistent, which means that oh, yeah, the reasoner will no longer be able to provide any useful information. Okay, we know that. And explain tries to explain us why. We know that because we just added on purpose. 
and it's trying to find the chains of inference that lead, lead to in the constituency. For example, the first one is, uh, uh, okay, one, Polytechnic Milano offers computer engineering. Polytechnic Torino offers computer engineering. Okay, it links the university name, degree name, is degree program, Polytechnic Torino University offered by inverse of offered degree, uh, because we have the link, uh, the, the, um, we have the facts, the axioms that use offers degree. But the logical constraints that we put on the property was on the offered by property. So the regional needs to take into account also that offered by is the inverse of offers degree. And then finally we have the inconsistency. So if we put together, there are some something which is not relevant like uh, this one and this one that we don't care actually, but they were found by the reasoner in, the, in their um, in their chaining, okay? All the names of the degree. What? Uh, so, university name is uh, a university. Domain university, university name, degree program, subclass, and so we, we discover that the final point of the reasoning that triggered inconsistency was that the degree program should be offered by maximum one university. So we have this uh, um, object property which is violated. Starting from these two actions. So we have actions, facts, and the consequence of these facts contradict a property, a logical property. And uh, the other explanations are more or less of the same type. Of course, they follow different paths. There are different ways of constructing but most of them start from the axioms and find uh, the same. There are different paths, different ways. You should the, the backward, the backward chain, you know. Uh, you start from the inconsistence and find uh, a, a, a series of justifications for that. And so there are different ones. Some may be more readable than others, but we already know the facts. So how, how can we, uh, and of course, in the reasoner, in the protege, all the classes, and properties that uh, are part uh, of the error are highlighted in red in this case. So we need to say that, okay, we need to delete this. Hmm. Should be wrong. And uh, we should add probably another MS computer engineering. So if we delete this, then now the reasoner is happy. We have one logical constraint more in the ontology. And maybe we want to add another instance of type uh, course, which is the Master of Computer Engineering at Milan, for example. So if we have different instances, then it will not be a problem. So this is the kind uh, of, uh, of, uh, of reasoning that we can do. Most of the reasoning is for helping us uh, to develop uh, and debug ontology and to reject uh, wrong, uh, inconsistent facts uh, in some way. And for this, we are using the predefined rules. So all these rules are already part of uh, OWL, DL and RL uh, languages. So we don't have to do anything. We just we, just, we are just happy uh, that the reasoner understands that. What happens if we want to do more? If the kind of rules that we have uh, is not sufficient. For example, one thing I would want to try to do is to, we have students, so classes, so individual by class, student. We have one student here, okay? We know which course it, follow, it follows, we know which, uh, uh, degree is enrolled, but we don't know which university is uh, belongs to. So, actually, we know because uh, he will, uh, of course, belong to Polytechnic of Torino because this PhD control in computer engineering is offered by Polytechnic of Torino. 
but it's not explicit here and I, I cannot say that in a WL because how, how, how could I say that I could say that if I have a new property uh, goes to university I can say that the domain of both university are students the range are um, universities every student should go to one university exactly one but which one I cannot have a logical constraint at the class level that depends on the fact that that the same individual belongs to another property or participates in another property we are trying to, to do some sort of, of change. If uh, uh, we are, it's a sort of uh, uh, transitivity. If I enroll in the degree and the degree is offered by the university, then I'm going to this university. It's a short term transitivity because there are three different relationships. It's not a one single relationship to this country. Otherwise, I would just declare the property as transitive and then done. Okay? But I can I want I, I know that this is, is true. This is a general rule. Simply, this general rule cannot be expressed in a WL. Actually, this specific one can be expressed in good property chain, but it's only this specific case. If it were a more complex case, it couldn't be done. But let's take this uh, as a simple example. And so I want to ask the, let's say the reader to follow additional rules that are not part of OWL, or cannot be expressed directly with OWL. Because it's not just description logic. I, it's an additional knowledge about the world, especially that links uh, individuals together. So if there are some rules that work at the individual level, they usually can be expressed uh, in WL. WL can express a lot of uh, relationships, uh, or the properties from uh, restrictions so on at the class level. They will apply to individuals, but to all individuals, not to that specific individual. So that's why they invented a new layer of reasoning that are a sort of user defined rules. Uh, in particular, one that is easy to write and uh, easily included inside Protege is the semantic buffer language. Um, that extends in some way all the OWL language by saying, okay, we have an ontology, classes, instances, plus a third layer, rules. So the ontology no longer contains just uh, OWL expressions that imply a set of rules from the OWL semantics. But the ontology itself can contain rules for reasoning itself on top of the other real reasoning rules. So we extend in some way the semantics of the WL. Of course, we need to be careful to avoid uh, no, uh, adding inconsistent facts because it's, uh, uh, the, the, the rule system is consistent. Uh, if I add a new rule, uh, I could make some dam damage. Okay, So I try to be careful. And uh, how does it work? Very simply. Rules. So uh, we define a set of rules. Every rule is made of a, pre -con a condition and a, uh, as an action, an antecedent and a consequent. And uh, whenever the condition specified the antecedent hold, then all the conditions specified the consequent must also hold. This is the theoretical, from the theoretical point of view, must also be true. If we want, uh, we can add uh, them as actions to the ontology. Um, okay, this is three that say the non citizen is true and so on, but the, the important part is that the condition clause is always treated as a conjunct, as an end. Huh? We already know that the or isn't, uh, isn't welcome in the OWL uh, uh, rule languages. And so we have a uh, rule in this format 
many individual conditions, they are called atoms, and another, and another, follows the consequence. And the consequence may be a set of other atoms or just one. Having more than one is, uh, is equivalent to repeating the rule many times with different uh, uh, consequences on the other side. Mm -hmm. But the, the real uh, intelligence is on the left side. I cannot have disjunction, I cannot have negation in, uh, uh, in this language. And uh, these atoms, what can they be? So what are, how can I write these rules? One way I can, be, I can say that an element is an instance of a class. Student X. University U. And these X are either a variable with a question mark like we did in SparkQL or the name of an instance. I can say, okay, uh, University Politecnico di Torino. If I want to select that specific or a property name that links two different uh, variables. Again, these variables can be variables, actually, or individuals. So, uh, offers by course university. A course is offered by university. You write them as offered by negative property, subject of the, pro of the relationship, uh, object of the then we may also have other two types of atoms that are same as and different from, all again related by the fact that uh, uh, X and Y may be different variables that refer to the same object. And uh, we want to avoid maybe applying this, a given rule to a, two instances of the same object. When there's some repetition or so on, we want to be sure that they are different. Uh, so there are additional conditions. So in general, we uh, have the same list. Uh, okay, the argument list of the predicate. So R0 is the full list of the atoms that are allowed in the WL with some examples. P is a person, Fred is a man. If I say Fred is a man, in the antecedent, then the rule is applied only if Fred is a man. If I say that in the consequence of the rule, then I make in Fred a man. Fred is already in existence, I add an entire statement to it. If I use a variable, person P, then the rule will apply to all the P's that are persons, like in Spark. As brother x and y, x is a brother of y. If, I, if it's in the condition part, that I'm selecting all the x y couples that are linked by the x brother relationship. If it's in the consequence, I'm making them brothers, by making x and y brothers, of course, which x is and y's? Those x's and y's that match the condition. And one of the rules of that SWRL is that in the consequence, you can only have the same variables that were already mentioned in the, in the condition. You cannot have new variables uh, or free variables. This Y is the list of all the siblings of Fred, for example. Mm -hmm. Then we, we may have properties about data values that are less useful to, from the, than the object properties. Uh, different uh, and same as, uh, plus a lot of other built-in function, built-in function like uh, some old mathematical functions, string functions and so on to manipulate uh, all your special that the idea, mm -hmm. but in your language. Uh, SWRL defines, uh, as always in the semantic web, an abstract syntax and then the syntax can be mapped to different types of uh, concrete syntaxes. And uh, the one that we use uh, and that uh, Protege uses uh, is the so-called human readable syntax, where we predicate on top of the variables. The variables are prefixed by a question mark. The implication sign is uh, dash greater than, 
this arrow that we make these two characters and the end is the, um, the accent the circumflex accent in, on the keyboard mm -hmm. uh, the after syntax is more complex saying x1 is a variable uh, uh, x2 is a variable and so on but we, we don't use this syntax. we only use this which is more, more readable and saying that if x1 as parent x2 so actually 2 is a parent of 1 and 3 is a brother of 2 then 3 should be an uncle of 1 okay, 3 is the brother of the father of 1 so it's in the uncle it's very similar to what we are trying to do here um, of course we could also do stupid things here x is a student then x is a person this i say stupid thing because it's already part of the object this rule will, will be already applied by the other by the reasoner because uh, why because student is a subclass of person so let's try to avoid redoing uh, what ws already does uh, something i didn't say is that when we apply these clauses these atoms we may choose to apply them on the original ontology or better on the ontology after the reason which is much better or actually is the only way to go because then if we apply these rules remember reasoning adds all the known facts all the true facts and then all the facts are there so you can match it's either there or not it's not that something that could happen later or could um, be true later. So it's something better to first reason the ontology with that other reason that will add all the non existing ones. And then add in your own rules where you can use the properties that you want and you can also use some implied properties or implied uh, types that were discovered by the reason. And so you can add additional inferences after the normal one that you have inferences. Okay. Um, so, okay, let's, uh, let's try to add our example here. So, in Protege, we have access to, where is that? To a so called tab here, the SWRL tab that will open you here, a tab, the very ugly looking uh, part uh, of, uh, of Protégé, oh. but okay, we, we are trying not to care. Uh, where we can uh, list some rules here in this part, and uh, in the bottom part we can control the execution of the rule engine. And controlling the execution means mainly is a three-step process the first step is uh, uh, drools uh, is the rule engine so it's a tool that is able to apply these rules no? the name of the tool is drools so it's a three-step process process first you get the ontology and if you already run the original it means the original ontology plus the rules that you wrote and you fit all of this to the drools to the rule engine. The second step is actually running those rules. And after running the rules, uh, you can see all the inferred actions. So what are the consequences of running these rules? And finally, if, so you can inspect them here. Now it's, it's empty, yes, of course. And if you want, you can add these facts back to the ontology here. Yeah. With, with the third button so that the new facts are now integrated again in the ontology and then maybe you run the, the, the reason again to check that you didn't do any damage to the logical consistency of the ontology so what we want to do here is to say that Luigi goes to the Polytechnic, right? so we need to define a new property of course object property here which is goes to university hmm? 
goes to university is a property with domain student plus person student and range university and right now the reason I understand this university but doesn't doesn't populate it, doesn't know about who goes where but we can define and uh, um, we can also define the inverse property if we want by call, uh, so a university has students okay that we define it easily just the, like the inverse of goes to university okay so far so good now we need to say that if an individual Luigi is enrolled in a degree and this degree is offered by a given university then that student goes to that university right so we have a new rule we go to the SWL what do you want with the red tab okay it's uh, all the reasoning errors okay new rule so for every rule we have uh, the name a comment uh, so uh, infer the university on the basis of the enrolled degree and here we write the rule there is a minimum of syntax assistance because this this line here will tell us if we are right if we are writing something wrong so first of all we only want to say if a student is enrolled in a degree so first we state the student s is a student student s and we have a degree No, it's not called degree, it's called, uh, and this I hate it because it, it's, uh, this, this is model. Program. Degree? Program. Program. Thank you. Okay. So S is a student and D is a degree program. And this student is enrolled in this degree. Enrolled in is the property. Enrolled in student degree and the degree is offered by a university so I have a university U university U and the offered by the degree uh, sorry and the university So I have all the chain. I have a student which is enrolled in a degree program which is offered by university. There is no order in which I write these clauses. It's just all in end, so I can write it in any order I want. Then I can say that goes to university, student, university. I'm adding a new fact to the knowledge base and they can write many other rules here they will be applied all together so remember that right now we didn't have this property on which we import the ontology number of rules imported one nine classes ten individuals 12 object properties so 
Uh, these are all, this is all the information that was sent from Protege to Drones. We run the reasoner. Successful execution of rule engine. Number of inferred actions, 248. We only wanted one, but actually uh, when, when the inference runs, uh, it finds everything, so it's forward chain. So this is all the inferred information. Uh, we should find uh, here the information that uh, uh, it will be a, of an um, object property assertion of a given instance to another. If we want to see it in the ontology, it's better. You see that the ontology, if I do a search, is enrolled in, follows, so this is the ontology, okay? It doesn't have the result of the reasoning integrated yet. The only way, the only, the, an easy way, because there's no easy way of, of finding or searching through this list, and it is a way of reimporting the results of the rules into the ontology. And now if we go and see the individuals, we see a mistake because we said the cost of the university, but it doesn't tell which university, right? A student, Luigi De Rus, is okay. Student goes to university. A student goes to university. So we have we did something wrong, right? Because they ah no sorry. Is that Polytechnic Torino? Probably was uh, a layout problem because I didn't see the Polytechnic Torino before. Individual was class, student, which you see, there's a layout problem here because it doesn't say Polytechnic Torino after it goes to university. Okay. Don't ask me why. But if we, if we so it's, it's only a layout problem because if I go here to see the individual, it goes to Polytechnic Torino. So I added this, and at the same time, the reasoner, because all the uh, rules all, all, all also include the OWR rules, it already navigated the inverse property. The S students was added also. So uh, remember that I didn't, uh, I just declared this property as being. Uh, um, the inverse property of uh, Ghost University, and this has been populated too. So the rules also you apply them. Mm -hmm. The reason why Drews made so many inferences is that it doesn't apply just my rule. It applies my rules plus all the RWRL uh, rules that also, of course, uh, need to complete the. Now, right now, we modified the ontology through the rules, uh, so it's good practice also to re run the reasoner again, to check, uh, to align the reasoner with the new version of the ontology, uh, but at this point there should be, uh, there is no further error because our rule didn't introduce any inconsistency into the, the ontology. So in this case, we have, okay. these students and we, we populate this. So in some way we can add new information with some uh, knowledge uh, that when we insert uh, 
it's a sort of an operational knowledge. When modeling an OBL, we are modeling logical knowledge, constraints. Things, the things may, must be related in this way. There are some minimum, maximum extension constraints and so on in order for the classes to be related. Uh, you can say that a student is enrolled in a university only if uh, it follows some degree. You can say that in another way. But uh, you, can, you, can, you can say to which university it should be enrolled at the other level. Because there is no way in the logical constraint to name or to, to select uh, one possible source of destination of the. Because when, when you apply the logical rules, we don't, you don't even have, or you don't even think about the instance. So all the instance reasoning usually is done by rules. Right? So we have a combination of logical reasoning over the ontology and uh, assertion reasoning or instance level reasoning, operational reasoning if you want to call them, uh, done with rules. And uh, well, this is a, uh, it's, it's, it's quite a simple example. What you cannot do, of course, is to remove a relationship. You can remove a class. You cannot uh, a class uh, a type. You cannot uh, uh, create. And this is a problem. You cannot create a new individual. In, in, the, in the standard, uh, without any extension of, uh, of this uh, of your, uh, language. So you can only use uh, existing individuals and add new types uh, and new relationships uh, to existing individuals. Mm? So it's, you can enrich basically the relationships. Mm? Or the types, of course, but types are also a kind of relationship. Uh, no? I could say that. Uh, Stuff is nothing intelligent that can be said in this ontology. Okay, so uh, next uh, in the next class uh, we will try to see how we can do this sort of operations. So loading ontology, modifying that, querying that, uh, running a rule engine, not in an interactive way through Portage, but uh, from a program. So with a library, with the Gina API library. Uh, that will help us uh, to do the same operation from a program. So if you want to build your applications, of course we have the edit of the tool for preparing the ontology, but then you need to process it uh, automatically with the tool of yourself. And this will be the, the topic of uh, the last class uh, in this course, okay? So for us, if you don't have any, for today, if you don't have any questions, we are done.